Welcome back, everybody, to the Metropolis Bulldogs Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. Season number one with the Bulldogs is nearly in the books. We only have one more game left to go, but today we are headed back onto the recruiting trail. We're going to be watching some greater Washington, D.C. area high school football, and to be specific, high school playoff football. We're going to be watching three games today. We're going to take a look at St. Francis against Archbishop Carroll. The second game we'll be watching is Gonzaga against DeMatha Catholic. And the last game will be the winners of these two matchups, dueling it out for the championship. So our first game is St. Francis facing off against Archbishop Carroll. There are a number of players on both sides to keep an eye on. Quarterback Manuel Castillo of Archbishop Carroll has committed to Metropolis. I'm very excited to see what he can do today as someone who very well could be our long-term quarterback. His top receiver is Osiris Young, a four-star. We're really struggling in this battle, but we are still in the race to get him. We broke the lock once in order to get back into the battle, and we're going to do it again right here. With South Carolina and New Mexico State really going after him, it's going to be a challenge, but he's a player I really want to get, and I'm excited to watch today. The other player on Archbishop Carroll who has committed here is cornerback Figgy Yakabuti, the younger cousin of our starting tight end, O'Shane Yakabuti. Figgy Yakabuti is likely to be a day one starter next season for our defense, so make sure to keep an eye on him as well. However, Archbishop Carroll is the heavy underdog. St. Francis is loaded, and they are the favorite to win this tournament. Led by four-star duo Montana Thomas and Chris Chalk, both of whom are committing to Tennessee, along with the number one running back in all of high school football, DeParis Smith, who is committed to Washington, among other stars. Archbishop Carroll, obviously, is a very talented team, too. They have a ton of talented juniors, along with the players we talked about, Manuel Castillo, Figgy Yakabuti, and Osiris Young. So let's get this game underway. The Washington, D.C. high school playoff semifinals. The winner of this game will advance to the championship to take on either Gonzaga or DeMatha. St. Francis gets to choose heads or tails. That ends up landing on heads, believe it or not. Archbishop Carroll will kick. So the St. Francis Panthers will start with the football. Third and three, Montana Thomas with a pitch to the outside for DeParis Smith, who makes a great play. There's a reason why. He's not only the number one ranked running back in the entire country, but the sixth ranked overall player. This kid is an absolute stud, and he's going to be terrorizing defenses in the Pac-12. He only gets three yards there on third down, so that leads us to a fourth and seven, and the offense will stay on the field. If this was NFL or college, it's an easy field goal, but high school kickers aren't that good. So St. Francis is going to go for it, and Montana Thomas launches a dime for his little brother, Orlando Thomas. Orlando Thomas is a junior wideout. Montana Thomas, a senior quarterback who we, is, we mentioned earlier, has committed to Tennessee to play with his number one wide receiver, Chris Chalk. Another fourth down, and again, the offense stays on the field. It's again Orlando Thomas, but he only gets nine. The Archbishop Carroll defense forces a stop. So despite having it in the red zone, St. Francis is unable to do anything. So Archbishop Carroll has for football. Here is D.D. Santander, the junior, with a big gain of 18 for the Archbishop Carroll Lions going for a first down. Manuel Castillo wears number 13, a three-star quarterback who, of course, has committed to Metropolis, loses five on the run, wrapped up by one of the best players in the Washington, D.C. area, Jaden Eastme, a four-star defensive end who is likely committing to USC. So St. Francis has it back. Here is Montana Thomas showing off his legs. Runs with it inside the 40. Montana Thomas is an athletic freak. Let me tell you, he's got some wheels. Second and seven, Thomas with a bomb for the end zone. It's caught. Chris Chalk with the touchdown. It's the Tennessee Connection. The future Tennessee quarterback to the future Tennessee wide receiver. As soon as the number one corner for Archbishop Carroll, Figgy Yakabuti, got off of Chris Chalk, that was sort of Thomas's signal to launch it deep. Number four, a junior, Takeo Green, was the one there in coverage. So that concludes the first quarter. The St. Francis Panthers are up top, seven to nothing. As I said earlier, St. Francis is the heavy favorites to win this tournament, and so far they're looking pretty solid. 
Third and eight here for Manuel Castillo and Archbishop Carroll. Under pressure, trying to get rid of it, but he cannot. Sacked on the play for a loss of two by Josiah Savage, one of the better players in the sophomore class. So he is a couple more years of high school. And now St. Francis has it back. It's an option for DePerry Smith down the field, wrapped up at the 35-yard line. As an Oregon fan, I really don't like that this kid is going to Washington because he is real, real good. I hope Metropolis schedules Washington in the future because I'm very curious to see how DePerry Smith collegiate career goes. Second and five, Montana Thomas with a nice cut. Brings it to about the 10-yard line. St. Francis is cruising right now and their offense is continuing to play really well second and goal now for the Panthers nearing the end of the second quarter trying to extend their lead Thomas it's a screen for DePerry Smith and he loses five immediately wrapped up on the play a big time stop for the Lions after getting about 12 yards it's fourth and goal and the offense is going to stay on the field again it's an option for Smith and he's going nowhere loses six a big play for the Archbishop Carroll defense. They get it back with under two minutes left to go in the first half. We'll see if they can finally get on the board as Manuel Castillo, the Metropolis commit, keeps it himself, going down the field, eventually tracked down by Jaden Eastme, but not before getting past the 40. I don't know what's more impressive there, the run by Castillo or the fact that it was a defensive lineman who tracked him down. Jaden Eastme is an absolute freak of nature. Speaking of East Me, he gets a big sack, forcing Castillo to lose about five yards. Jaden East Me, the likely USC commit, is dominating right now. Third and ten, a dot by Castillo over to the junior receiver, Ja'Kai Smith Gardner, who gets about 20. So now it looks like Archbishop Carroll is really getting close to the goal line as it's first and goal. Handoff for DD Santander. And this game is tied at seven with about a minute left in the first half. A big drive from Manuel Castillo, the future Bulldog. And it looks like Archbishop Carroll is going to make this a game despite being heavy underdogs. It looks like they're going to give St. Francis a run for their money. So the Panthers have it back. Thomas under a lot of pressure. Goes downfield for his tight end, Dan Griffith. Still alive. He gains 52 yards. A huge play by Dan Griffith. Not the guy you'd expect to make a big play there, but sure enough, huge first down for the Panthers as Montana Thomas keeps it himself. Thomas with blocks. He is down at the one. A big play for Montana Thomas. And St. Francis is very close to the end zone, but they're having some trouble punching it in. Second and goal, Jerry Yang is in motion as it's a handoff for Smith. He is in for a touchdown. DePerry Smith, the number one running back in America, will put St. Francis back on top. And Carroll does not have a whole lot of time here. They pretty much need a miracle, as here is Santander. Breaks the tackle, still alive! DD Santander wrapped up at around the 30. A gain of 39 yards for the junior running back, who's nearing 100 yards here in the first half. But unfortunately for Archbishop Carroll, they're only going to have time to run one more play. It looks like it's going to be a Hail Mary. Castillo heaves it for the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown. Osiris Young, the four-star recruit, ties it up for the Lions. What a play by Manuel Castillo, the future Metropolis Bulldog, to his number one receiver, Osiris Young, who very well could be a future Metropolis Bulldog. Wow, what an ending to the first half. Three touchdowns in the final minute. This game is tied up at 14. We're going to switch sides and use our Archbishop Carroll in the second half. Since we don't really have any allegiances to this team, I want to get an opportunity to use her everybody. On third and four, Castillo is crunched in the pocket by guess who? Big number 10, Jaden Eastme, who's been flying around the field today. That'll force a punt. St. Francis gets it back with pretty good field position as Thomas keeps it himself and loses three. The junior edge rusher, Marco Ellis, is the one to bring him down, one of these standout players on this Archbishop Carroll defense. Third and one, Thomas with a toss for DePerry Smith. Smith pushed out at the 10 by Timmons. 
A huge run by DePerry Smith, who has lived up to the billing tonight as well. The number one running back in high school football. Second and goal. Thomas keeps it himself. Touchdown, St. Francis Panthers. Montana Thomas, the senior and Tennessee commit, will put St. Francis back on top as it's now 21-14. Still plenty of time for Manuel Castillo to try to get his guys back in the game on second and four. Breaks one sack, but is still brought down. That's again number 10, Jaden Eastme, who finishes off the play, and it's a third down and 10 here for the Lions. Castillo looking to throw it, scrambling to the right side. He's going to try to run for the first down, and he got it. Manuel Castillo pretty much threw his body forward, hoping he, that he would get lucky, and he sure did. A big first down there for the Lions. They're marching forward as it's now a third down and goal. Looks like Manuel Castillo's going to call an audible. Going to change this from a run to a pass. Castillo looking to throw it in the end zone. It's caught. Osiris Young with his second touchdown of the game, and Archbishop Carroll ties it up at 21. Again, even though I said St. Francis is heavy favorites, Carroll has made this into a game. Thomas loses five on the first down run. Again, it is Marco Ellis who brings him down as we conclude the third quarter. We have got ourselves a ball game. 21-21. Can Archbishop Carroll pull off the upset and advance to the state championship? Or will St. Francis stay alive and face off against either Gonzaga or DeMatha? Third and 13, short throw for DePerry Smith, who gets a huge first down. It's a bold strategy, leaving the number one running back in the country wide open like that. And St. Francis is going to capitalize on Carroll's mistake. Third and 15, Thomas, deep shot. It is broken up by Takeo Green. So that'll lead to a fourth and 15. And look at this. The offense stays on the field. They're going to go for it. Thomas going to take a shot for the end zone. It's caught for a touchdown. Orlando Thomas with the score. I don't know what kind of coverage that was. I think it was number four, Takeo Green again, who allowed a deep touchdown earlier in the game. He's looking like Eli Apple did in the Super Bowl. So St. Francis is back up on third and eight. Castillo only runs for about three yards. So that brings us to an interesting fourth and five, and it's the offense who stays on the field. A ballsy call by whoever the head coach is. As it looks like it's a jet sweep for Osiris Young. Young gets by defenders and somehow gets the first down. That should have been a loss of about three or four yards, but Osiris Young gets just enough to keep the drive and the game going. Very next play, it's back to Osiris Young, who brings it inside the 45. I know it's not likely that Metropolis is going to get this kid, Osiris Young, but man, he's good. On first down, Castillo scrambling again. He gets it to the tight end, Jamar Blanco with blocks. Blanco wrapped up inside the five. I thought he could have taken it all the way, but nonetheless, a huge play there for the Archbishop Carroll Lions. Second and goal. Castillo scrambling, goes short, and it's caught by Sammy Arrington, one of the backup offensive linemen for the touchdown. And now it's a one-point game, but look at this. Carroll could have tied it, but instead they're going to go for two. What a play call here. We'll see if it pays off. Handoff for Santander. He got it. Wow. What a gutsy play call by Archbishop Carroll. And they now have the lead, 29-28. A huge drive for the Tennessee commit, Montana Thomas. We'll see if he can lead his team down the field for victory. First play of the series, Thomas is intercepted! It's Figgy Yakabuti, the Metropolis commit, who brings it to the 30. A costly pass by Montana Thomas, and a huge interception by the future Bulldog, Figgy Yakabuti. Second and three, the Lions are chewing clock as Santander gets the first down. He accidentally goes out of bounds at around the five yard line, but still a huge first down. Now third and goal. The Bulldogs are trying to throw the ball to get into the end zone, which is odd considering they should be chewing clock. Castillo connects with Osiris Young for the touchdown. And Archbishop Carroll now leads by eight. Osiris Young with a hat trick. Three touchdowns in this game. And St. Francis is down by eight points. A touchdown and a two-point conversion does tie it, though. On first down, Thomas going deep is picked off. 
to Keo Green with the interception, and that's going to do it. Archbishop Carroll is going to pull off the upset. St. Francis, one of the best teams in high school football, is eliminated prematurely. A huge upset for quarterback Manuel Castillo, the Metropolis commit, and the Archbishop Carroll Lions, who are going to the state championship. That game will be later in this video. Remember, I said earlier, there are three games today, the two semifinal games, and then the state championship. As we take a look at the box score, Manuel Castillo can play. I'm excited to have him with our Metropolis Bulldogs going forward, and hopefully we can tag along Osiris Young, because he's quite good too. DePara Smith certainly lived up to the bill as a five-star, and now we move to our second game. These two teams are bitter rivals, the Gonzaga College High School Eagles and the DeMatha Catholic Stags. Only one commit from either of these two teams, it's defensive tackle Izian Ikerike. Ikerike plays for DeMatha, he's very raw, only a two-star, probably going to get redshirted this season, but I really like his athleticism. Gonzaga cornerback Marcus Sorvanis is also on our board. We're really the only team going after him, so we should land him, hopefully, as we take a look at some key players for both teams. Gonzaga is a big underdog today, but they do have plenty of talent, including senior quarterback Dom Campbell, who is headed to Florida State. He has plenty of talent on offense, including Clemson commit Gordon Price at tight end and Debo Campbell, a talented junior. As for DeMatha, this team is one of the best run games in the country, led by a pair of four-star running backs, Maryland commit Jackson Small, Syracuse commit Jelani Uchichi. Quarterback Wilbur Ford, a three-star headed to Maryland, is also very mobile as well. And look out for junior running back, wide receiver hybrid, Kemi Amembenigba as well. So clearly DeMatha Catholic has so many players on offense who they trust to give the ball to. And it's going to be a challenge for Gonzaga. But we've already seen one big upset today with Archbishop Carroll defeating St. Francis. So we'll see if Gonzaga can have the same luck here against DeMatha. Just like the first game, we're going to use her both teams, one per each half. Look at the quarterback. It's Wilbur Ford with a gain of 27 yards. Ford is not the lead runner on this team, obviously, considering he has two four-star running backs, but he's got some wheels. First and goal, it's the Maryland commit, Jackson Small, with the touchdown, and DeMatha Catholic is quickly on the board. It's now 7-0. Let's take a look at the Gonzaga offense, led by senior quarterback Dom Campbell, who's going to be a Florida State Seminole on first down. Campbell connects with his little brother. It's Debo. Campbell for a nice gain. Debo Campbell is a running back wide receiver hybrid. He gets snaps at both positions. Very reminiscent of Debo Samuel in the NFL of the San Francisco 49ers. On third and ten, Campbell on the run with a strike into the hands of Gordon Price. Price, one of the better tight ends in this class, will be catching passes from DJ Uyengalale and the Clemson Tigers next year. On first down, Campbell with a shot downfield for his little brother. Debo Campbell with a huge reception, and it appears Gonzaga's offense has quickly matched DeMatha's first drive. Third and goal for the Eagles. Play action fake. Campbell connects with Gordon Price for the touchdown, and Gonzaga ties it up. The four-star tight end will put the Eagles on the board, and we're knotted up at seven. DeMatha has it back. Look at Wilbur Ford breaking tackles. Ford with blocks down the field. He's eventually wrapped up by Freeman. Wow, what a run by Wilbur Ford, who has ran wild so far today. Third and four. Wilbur Ford going to look to throw it under pressure, and he is sacked on the play for a loss of two. A big play for the Gonzaga College High School defense. Don't ask me why they have college and high school in the name. That's, that's just what the school is called. I have to go with it. So they're going to send their kicker out. This guy looks like he's a biscuit away from 300 pounds. Not only does he have a big tummy, but he's got a big leg as it goes right down the middle. And DeMatha Catholic now leads 10-7. Still in the first quarter. Ton of offense so far. Campbell in motion as Don Campbell, the quarterback under a ton of pressure, evades the sack, still on his feet, and he connects with the wide receiver, Patterson for a huge gain. Obadiah Patterson Jr. with a huge first down. One of the other talented weapons on this team. Very next play. Campbell now scrambles to the right. Gets it to Debo Campbell who jukes his way inside the 10. 
DeMatha's defense has looked bad so far in this game as we conclude the first quarter. DeMatha Catholic leads 10-7, but Gonzaga is marching on the doorstep. Do you like offense? Well, I imagine this game's been fun for you. Third and goal. Campbell connects with the tight end. Gordon Price breaks a tackle and is in. The Clemson commit with his second receiving touchdown in the first half. And Gonzaga takes their first lead of the game as it's now 14-10. DeMatha Catholic has it back. Second and 13. It's a handoff for Jackson Small who breaks a tackle. Small stumbling forward. Wrapped up by Marcus Sorvanis, the Metropolis recruiting target. A nice run there for Jackson Small, who of course has committed to Metropolis' rival, the University of Maryland, along with his quarterback, Wilbur Ford. So we're going to see plenty of Wilbur Ford and Jackson Small in the future. Ford with a broken tackle, still on his feet. What a run for Wilbur Ford, breaks another tackle, and he is stopped at the one. He's looking like Marshawn Lynch tonight with some of these runs. Holy smokes! Metropolis' defensive coordinator better be sweating balls right now because I don't think he wants to face off against Wilbur Ford anytime soon. Wilbur Ford might as well just move over to running back with how he runs it. Second and goal. Can DeMatha Catholic take the lead? It's a handoff for the power back, Jelani Uchichi. And DeMatha is back on top. The Syracuse commit will put them up by three. So now Gonzaga has it back. Still, every drive in this game has resulted in points for the offense. And it doesn't look like that's going to stop anytime soon. Again, it's the tight end, Gordon Price, who has had a great first half here for Gonzaga with another big game. Now we have a fourth and five. And again, doesn't hurt to be aggressive. So the Eagles are going to look to go for it here. Campbell under center. The other Campbell in motion. Here is Dom Campbell. Looking to throw it, and then now try to scramble, and he is stopped. A defensive stop. I don't believe it. It took nearly the entire first half, but it happened. Third and eight now for DeMatha Catholic coming off the turnover on downs. Ford under pressure, incomplete. Another defensive stop. This is transcendent. Both defenses now get a stop, and now it seems like maybe we're not going to have a total Pro Bowl style shootout. So DeMatha has it back. Another fourth and nine, and they're going for it again as Campbell's pass for Braylon McCormick is incomplete, broken up by Alvin Keller. So both offenses kind of hitting the struggle bus to end the first half, but a very high-scoring first half nonetheless. DeMatha Catholic leads 17-14. Gonzaga does start the ball, though, so who knows what they can do here in the third quarter as we're now going to user the DeMatha Catholic stags here for the rest of the game. Third and four. It's a handoff for Debo Campbell. And he is tracked down. It's the Metropolis commit. Izion Ikerike showing off his speed and his great quickness to track down the running back. DeMatha has it back on first down. Wilbur Ford going to look to scramble. Now he's going to run with it. Another nice play for Ford as he gets about 12. And DeMatha is starting to get closer to the red zone. I don't know why the Boise State Bronco mascot is here. Looks like it's going to be an option. Ford looking to pitch it, and he gets it to Deo Amembenegba's little brother, Kemi Amembenegba, who finds the end zone for a touchdown, and DeMatha Catholic extends their lead. A big play there by the junior, and it's now 24-14 as Campbell is rocked on third down. Again, it's Izion Ikarike coming in to make the play. Ikarike has had a few really nice plays in this game. I'm excited to see him on the Metropolis defense. So now DeMatha has it back. Look at Jackson Small go down the sideline. They are not going to catch him. It's going to be a huge touchdown run for Jackson Small from 75 yards out. And DeMatha is starting to turn this game into a blowout. 31-14 after the huge run there by the Maryland commit. And Gonzaga's in some trouble. The struggles would continue for Gonzaga as Ferguson gets nothing on third down, wrapped up by Henry Curry. A dominant third quarter there for the DeMatha Catholic Stags. The offense was great, the defense was great, as they lead by 17 and have the football to start the fourth quarter. Ford, perfect timed pitch to Jelani Uchichi, the Syracuse commit, dragging a defender with him to the 10-yard line. Couple plays later, it's now third and five. Back to Uchichi, and he gets his second touchdown of the game, and it appears DeMatha has this game iced. A big run for Jelani Uchichi, and it's now 38 to 14. Gonzaga's in some big trouble. 
on first down. Campbell is sacked. I believe that was Iziani Kirike who got some contact. The linebacker Elijah Holloway, the fourth, is the one who gets credited with the sack. Campbell now looking to set a screen here for Debo Campbell, who's had a big game in the passing game as he gets another nice reception. Well over 100 receiving yards on the day, nearing 10 receptions as well. Fourth and nine, Gonzaga has no choice but to go for it. Campbell with a nice throw for Rawlins. He brings it to the 20. Gonzaga's not going to quit. you got to respect them for the effort, even if it looks like they're pretty much out of this game. As on first down, Campbell looking to throw it for the end zone, and it is intercepted by Rucker. Now I think that officially will be the dagger. A dominant second half for the DeMatha Catholic Stags, and they are headed to the Greater Washington, D.C. Area State Championship to face off against Archbishop Carroll, and that game will be starting in just a moment. As we look at the box score, Wilbur Ford only threw the ball seven times. DeMatha is a team who lives and dies by the run game. Ford was great on the ground, so was Jackson Small, Jelani Uchichi, and Kemi Amenbenigba. I thought Dom Campbell played pretty well. I think Florida State's got a good one, but unfortunately, he was unable to lead his team to victory. So now we get to the championship game, and it is a rainy one. Here in Hyattsville, Maryland, as the DeMatha Catholic Stags host the Archbishop Carroll Lions. Both of these teams have already won today. I'll refresh you guys with the rosters just so we know everybody. Archbishop Carroll is, of course, led by Metropolis commit Manuel Castillo at quarterback, along with wide receiver Osiris Young and cornerback Figgy Yakabuti, among others. DeMatha Catholic, we know they love to run the ball. Look out for Jackson Small, Jelani Uchichi, and Kemi Amembenigba have big performances along with quarterback Wilbur Ford. So it should be a fun matchup with multiple Metropolis players on both sides and multiple players going to some of Metropolis' rivals as well as we kick off this game for the championship. Archbishop Carroll Lions, DeMatha Catholic Stags. Should be a fun one. We're going to use your DeMatha in the first half and Archbishop Carroll here in the second half as Carroll elects to kick off. So that means DeMatha will start with the football. First down here for the Stags. Amenbenigba in motion as Ford keeps it and loses five. After a big day on the ground against Gonzaga, already not an ideal start for Wilbur Ford and company. Third down and two now. Looks like it's going to be an option. Ford pitches it for Kemi Amenbenigba, who goes down the field, stiff arms the defender to the 45-yard line. A big gain there for Amenbenigba as DeMatha would slowly but surely march down the field. It looks like they're going to try to punch it in here on third and goal. They do exactly that. Nice juke move by Wilbur Ford. Ford did not score at all in the first game, so it's cool to see him find the end zone here as DeMatha on their first drive of the game finds the end zone. They lead 7-0. Here's the Metropolis commit, Manuel Castillo with a bomb on third and five. It's caught by Ja'Kai Smith-Gartner for a gain of 50. Unfortunately, it's not all good and dandy on that play for Archbishop Carroll as Ja'Kai Smith-Gardner suffered a head injury. He will not return to the game. So a big loss to the Carroll receiving core, which means they're going to have to lean even more on Osiris Young along with this kid, Chase Ramsey III, a junior, with the 18-yard rushing touchdown, a perfectly timed option from Manuel Castillo, and this game is now tied at 7. DeMatha has it back. There's Kemi Amenbenigba on the reception. Amenbenigba did not catch a pass in the first game, along with the other really good receiver on this team, Seth Miles, who is committed to Iowa State. Second and three, handoff for Uchichi. He loses five. A big play by the run defense for the Lions. It's Burdett Fontenot who brings him down. Pretty exciting first quarter. Carroll seven, DeMatha seven. DeMatha is the heavy favorite in this game, but we already saw Carroll get a big upset earlier today against St. Francis, and they're playing fairly well against DeMatha as they get a stop on fourth down. Jackson Small loses a yard, so DeMatha Catholic is unable to score on that drive, and now Archbishop Carroll can take the lead. Nice throw on second and 11 from Castillo over to Osiris Young. The hopefully... Metropolis duo, if Osiris Young does end up choosing to commit to us. On first down, Castillo under pressure. He is sacked. The junior safety, Luis Miles, with the sack. Miles' older brother, Seth Miles, is a wide receiver for DeMatha Catholic, going to Iowa State. Is on third and three. It's Blanco, who is just short of the first down. So an interesting decision here for Carroll on fourth and one as DeMatha calls a timeout. 
And it looks like the Carroll offense is going to stay on the field. They will elect to go for it. No shortage of fourth downs in this video as it's a handoff for D.D. Santander, who is stopped. A big play. I believe that was Henry Curry with the hit. So DeMatha has it back. Fourth and one from inside the 20, and they're going for it. The balls on these coaches are insane as Wilbur Ford gets the first down. I think the whole idea of that play was if they didn't get the first down, that Archbishop Carroll would score and DeMatha would get the ball back with enough time. But since they got the first down, they get to keep the drive going. Is on third and seven. Wilbur Ford with blocks. A big gain of around 20 yards on the ground. Ford hasn't ran it as well as he did in the first game, but clearly Archbishop Carroll's run defense is a force to be reckoned with. On first down, Ford going to scramble and run with it again. Right as I said, Wilbur Ford wasn't running all that well. He's had a couple of big gains with his legs on back-to-back -back plays. But DeMatha does not have a whole lot of time, and they only have one timeout. They need to score quickly. Second and four. Ford looking to throw it, and he connects. A really nice pass for Seth Miles, the Iowa State commit, who couldn't get out of bounds quick enough forcing them to call a timeout. So now they have about seven seconds and one timeout. Short throw for Small, who was unable to get into the end zone. They got to get back to the line of scrimmage quickly to try to spike it or something, and they don't have enough time. So DeMatha Catholic wastes an opportunity to try to get into the end zone, and that will conclude the first half. Carroll 7, DeMatha 7. A big stop for the Archbishop Carroll defense, and they will start the football here in the third quarter. Play action fake. Manuel Castillo looking to throw it. He gets it to Young, who splits two defenders. Osiris Young into the end zone for a touchdown. And the Archbishop Carroll Lions will take the lead. Another big play by Osiris Young, who has been unbelievable in this video. And Carroll is up top 14-7. Damatha has it back. Here's Wilbur Ford now down the field. A big play for the Maryland commit. And we are now tied at 14. So back-to-back -back huge plays for both offenses. First it's Osiris Young. Now it's Wilbur Ford. And this game is knotted up at 14 apiece. Handoff for D.D. Santander who tries to hurdle the defender. A nice first down for Santander who really struggled in the first half. But already he has played better here in the third quarter with us using him. Castillo with a nice throw for Osiris Young who gets by the defender. Now going backwards. He was trying to create a big play there. Still a big play nonetheless as he brings it to about the 25-yard line. Fourth and seven now. Wouldn't you know it? The offense stays on the field. They're going to go for it. Castillo scrambles to his left. Is he going to try to run for the first down? He does. And he is stopped about a yard short. Big tackle by DeMatha. And the game remains tied at 14 as the Stags get it back. On third and ten, it's a handoff for Jackson Small. And he's about a yard shy. Big tackle by Hayes to get the stop as it remains tied at 14. Archbishop Carroll gets it back. Here's D.D. Santander outrunning the defender. Breaks a tackle. What a run by D.D. Santander. You can easily tell in a high school atmosphere which kids really stand out. D.D. Santander stands out. I'm excited to have Metropolis go after him in recruiting next season. Fourth and seven. The offense going to go for it as Castillo slides for a first down. It seems like on fourth down today, these teams have really trusted their quarterbacks to run it. Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. Very next play, Castillo looking to throw it. Connects with Osiris Young for the touchdown. And Archbishop Carroll will regain the lead. Osiris Young with his second touchdown in the quarter. And Carroll is up 21-14. First down here for DeMatha. It's a screen for Jackson Small, who trucks the defender and is wrapped up by Figgy Yakabuti. What a play to end the third quarter there as it's Archbishop Carroll up top 21-14. Carroll is one quarter away from pulling off the upset and winning the state championship. So after DeMatha's offense would stall, they're going to bring out the field goal unit. It seems like of the four teams we've seen today, DeMatha is really the only one who trusts their kicker and for good reason. He's got a strong leg. As he sinks the kick, it's now 21-17. So now Carroll has it back. It's third down and four. Castillo calls for an audible. Castillo scrambling, takes a shot. Deep down field, it's caught. Osiris Young does it again, and he brings it inside the 10. But Boise State Bronco is not as pleased with that result. Third and goal. Castillo connects with Osiris Young, and Archbishop Carroll leads by two scores. 
Osiris Young with three receiving touchdowns in the second half alone. He now has six today, and it's 28-17. Wilbur Ford on first down, connects with Jackson Small for a big gain. DeMatha has to move quick. They know they're kind of in trouble, and for whatever reason, both teams took a while to get to the huddle there as on second and 12. Ford looking to throw it. His pass is intercepted. Takeo Green picks it off. And Archbishop Carroll's going to pull off the upset. Green looks like he's going to take it the distance for a pick six. And I think this game appears to be over. Archbishop Carroll is going to win the state championship with a pair of huge upsets. First against St. Francis and now on the road against DeMatha Catholic. So it's 35-17. DeMatha appears to be out of it. But why not another interception and another pick six? Again, it's Takeo Green with back-to-back -back pick sixes on back-to-back -back plays. That's one way to end the game. 42-17, we have a final. Archbishop Carroll, the Lions have won the Greater D.C. Area High School Football Championship by a huge performance of the senior duo, Manuel Castillo and Osiris Young. Hopefully those two are connecting on Saturdays in Metropolis. Takeo Green with two late pick sixes. And it's fun to say that Manuel Castillo beat Wilbur Ford because these two are going to be rivals in college with Castillo coming to Metropolis and Ford going to Maryland. So these two quarterbacks are probably going to play against each other a number of times. And it's good to see that Castillo gets the upper hand here because at the end of the day, he is our guy. So that's going to conclude today's episode. A really fun video. This episode took me a ton of work, but it ended up being a blast. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. Next episode, we will conclude the regular season facing off against one of our other rivals, Capital College. So I hope you all are excited. Peace out.